All right, my fellow travelers on this crappy path we call grief. Today, we are getting into the last section of the trust method that I talk about in my book, Grief Sucks, But Your Life Doesn't Have To. So quick recap, we have gone over the first letter. So the first T is tell your truths. Then we have R, which is reach out. Then we have U, which is unpack your emotions. Then we have S, which is search for meaning. And today we are on the last one, which is the letter T, which stands for transform your future. Now, that might seem completely overwhelming and it absolutely is. We're not just gonna snap our fingers and magically overnight, we're gonna be totally fine and transformed. Our grief won't bother us anymore. No, that is, it is not what we're talking about here. Transforming your future is all about taking tiny steps to get where you want to be. Baby steps, Mitchell, baby steps. So the transform your future chapter in my book starts with what I think is one of the greatest quotes in grief history. And it is by Sheryl Sandberg and Adam Grant. And it's right here. Option A isn't available, so let's just kick the shit out of option B. So I start out this chapter talking about that quote. Our option A is no longer available to any of us. If you're grieving someone, option A was obviously to still have that person. But we don't have option A anymore, so we have to come up with an option B. And what better way to deal with option B than to just kick the shit out of it and make it the best you can possibly be. Again, seems like a very tall order. So let's break it down. I'm going to be really honest with you. The statistics surrounding the world of grief are pretty abysmal and they can be very disheartening, especially people who have lost children like I have. Going through such a disastrous type of grief can really affect your health mentally and physically and leave you at the mercy of a million different problems that might happen because of your grief. When I was first studying grief after my daughter died, I ran across these statistics and it was the most effing depressing thing that I had ever heard. Well, that is depressing as hell. And I kind of thought right away, like, I do not want to turn into one of these statistics because who wants to look forward to a life filled with illness and misery? I don't know about you guys, but that doesn't give me hope for my future. I wanted something to look forward to. So my goal with this chapter and with the book in general is to acknowledge the pain that we're in and never minimize what we're feeling but to also offer hope and daring to imagine a world with resilience and growth and, oh my God, like maybe even happiness. Inconceivable. So how do we get there? Well, one of the first things I talk about is kind of this journey of self-discovery and figuring out who in the heck am I now that my person is gone. So many times the secondary losses that we experience with our grief affect more than just who we were to the person that we lost. So for example, when my daughter Libby died, I lost my role as the mother of a young child. I was doing all of the things like going to the elementary school and driving to the dance class every day and doing the dance mom competition thing. And when I lost her, that immediately just went away. Like poof, it no longer existed. I got divorced not long after Libby died. So then I was no longer a wife. That identity, poof, went away. My older sons graduated, one from college, one from high school, and poof, I was an empty nester. I had so many changes and losses of who I was that I was just in this spiral of trying to figure out who in the hell am I right now? So a big part of transforming your future starts by figuring out who you are today and what your different roles are. So part of this chapter has you doing exercises to kind of figure out 
what you want for your future and what you imagine for yourself. And if you could have anything that you would want, aside from getting your person back, which isn't going to happen, I'm so sorry, what would you want that to be? And if it scares you, that's okay. And if it's something that feels insanely huge that you can never accomplish, also okay. If it's something that's completely different than what you have now, still okay. It's okay to dream big. It's okay to dream differently. It's okay to dream at all. And I have to say that because so many people feel guilty even imagining a future where you're actually enjoying your life. Kind of along the same lines, I also have you examining your values. What are things that are important to you? I really have you get down into the nitty gritty, kind of exploring yourself internally. Who am I? What is important to me? What do I care about? What are the things that are non-negotiable in my life? Who am I? Once you kind of figure those things out, then the next step is to set very, very small goals that head you in the right direction to achieving the things that you want to achieve. And when I say small goals, I'm talking like micro goals. So I have you start out just looking at the basic three things, which are eating healthy, moving your body a little bit, and making sure you get enough sleep. Then we talk about making sure that your goals align to those values that you came up with. We talk about how boring goals are awesome. We love boring, achievable goals. And I go through a whole list of goals that you can set for yourself. Whether it is adopting healthier habits or finding solace in routines or setting goals that are going to light a little bit of a spark within you. Each action is a building block towards a life that honors our past and our losses while also embracing that possibility of a happier future. As we kind of chart that course to move forward, I kind of arm you with a toolbox that I call the Healthy Living Library, and it is full of suggestions of healthy things that you can do and goals to set for yourself and ways that you can help navigate those grief tsunamis that threaten to knock you off track because this is grief, y'all. Those storms are going to come, and I try to provide you with some tools and techniques to get through those storms with as little damage as possible. In a nutshell, transforming your future and envisioning what lies ahead is challenging. It's a little daunting. It's a little scary. Okay, sometimes it's very scary. It requires courage and it requires a bit of imagination. It is really hard, but it is so important to start to allow yourself to dream again. And nothing about this vision and nothing about transforming our future is about invalidating our pain or our loss. It's about our capacity to grow and to find resilience and to keep our person with us as we move forward into this new existence without them. I've said it before and I've said it a million times, everyone's grief journey is their own. So your path to transforming your future is going to be completely different than anyone else's path. I don't know what your option B is going to be, but I want you to kick the shit out of it. And I hope that in this section of the book that I give you the tools to get there. You got this. So I am curious if you have a dream, if you have a vision of your future that you would like to achieve, what do you see for yourself in the future? If you're at a point where you can't envision anything right now, that is okay. It is the last section of the book. And we had to make our way through all of the other letters in trust to get there. And that is a different amount of time for every single person. You can take as long as you want. There is no timetable. My goal and my hope for you is that eventually you are able to get to that last T and start to think about transforming your future and making it into something that you can actually look forward to. 
So for the past few weeks, I've been recapping the book for you. Now that I've gotten to that last section, I'm going to head back to making other kinds of videos. So I am curious if there's anything that you would like me to talk about. If you have any video requests, any topics that you want me to cover, any questions that you want me to answer, I would love to hear from you to kind of get ideas of videos that you would find the most helpful because that is why I'm here. I am here to help you guys. So let me know in the comments, or you can always go to brookcarlock.org and send me a message there if you wanted to be more private with suggestions for things that you would like me to make videos about. I hope that this was helpful for you. I will see you guys next week. As always, sending love and hugs. Bye.